Good evening and welcome to another edition of Friday Night Lights presented by the Allegheny Health Network and St. Vincent. I'm Jay Pushkar, he's Mike Fenner, and we'll hear from the great Tom Decker shortly. <laughs> Mike, high school football postseason action continues around the area with big schools involving sub-regional action and the small schools still playing for district championships. Yeah, we all get started here tonight with the McDowell football program coming off a win in the D10 6A championship last Wednesday night. McDowell taking the field at Veterans Stadium tonight, taking on State College in the 6A sub-regional at the Vet. State College would strike first in this one. Brady Dorner off play action, airs it out. Isaiah Edwards, he was a problem. Comes down with it in the end zone. 7 nothing. Little Lions, they were anything but little tonight. To the second now, Trojans on the doorstep. But Elijah Lopez gets the ball here that it's knocked free. That's actually Darius Wall. And that's a fumble. It goes 86 yards the other way to the McDowell 10-yard line. And State College can't quite score, but they will get it inside to the 10-yard line. Next play, Dressen Green. Takes the handoff and he finds his way in for another touchdown. 14 0 State College, a huge swing of momentum there. And how about uh, Green? Not done. Rolling in second time on the night. 21 0 State College in the first half. McDowell wouldn't get on the board till the third. Chris Yukno with a beauty looking deep to the left corner here. How about Darius Wall? The 21 7 game at that point on the touchdown connection, 36 yards. That was the score. Uh, moving forward here, 58 yard run for Green. 28 to 7, Little Lions as the snowfall started to stick to the ground here. Then the Trojans trailing 35 7. It's Yukno looking up top here for Braden Sobolewski. 24 yard touchdown, 35 14 game, and then trailing 42 14 to the fourth. Demarion Rash as the snow started to really become a factor. The short touchdown run for oh, McDowell. Unbelievable scene as the Trojans <laughs> fall 42 21. They see their season come to an end after a valiant effort against State College in the 6A sub regional. They're a fun group, and they're an explosive group, and, uh, you know, both sides of the ball, they were, they were really good. We were talented on defense. We put up some incredible numbers. Uh, I think going, giving up, like, 13 points a game going into the last two games. Give a credit to our, our defensive coordinator and staff, and offensively, you know, we did a lot of really good things on the ground and, and in the air, and we were 8-1. and one. That's nothing to hang your hat about, but uh, I wish we were playing some more football, that's for sure. On the Lewis Fitness and Performance scoreboard, it's McDowell falling 42 to 21. You know, 250 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Wall with three catches, 49 yards, and a score, eight carries, and 42 yards as the Trojans see their season come to an end. Meanwhile, in Class 4A, three time defending state champion Cathedral Prep taking on University Prep down at Pittsburgh's Couples Stadium. All Ramblers from the start. Tamar Sample going downfield, hooks up with Jalen Carson for the 30 yard strike. PAT failed, but it was a 6 0 Cathedral Prep lead. Moments later, on another drive, they go to the ground game. Luke Sittinger practically goes untouched up the middle. He goes 31 yards on the rushing touchdown. Two point try is good. 14 0 Ramblers. From there, Cathedral Prep's defense flexing their muscles. Ben Turpak steps in front of the pass, gets the pick six. Cathedral Prep now leading by three scores. Later in the first half of play, University trying to get something going here. They're going to look for the big play downfield. The pass is overthrown and into the hands of Jaheim Howard. And watch number two do the rest. Follows a couple blocks, and then he is off to the races. 90 yards for the pick six. Ramblers would eventually build a 35-0 lead. They never looked back in this one. Cathedral Prep dominates University Prep 42-6. The Ramblers advance to the first round of the Class 4A state tournament. Now it's time to head to Crawford County with our third member of our team. He's the great Tom Decker. Tom? Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Tonight was the first ever meeting between Farrell and Maplewood, and the district title was on the line. The Tigers shut out Reynolds 36 to nothing last week to keep their undefeated season going, but the challenge of taking on this Steelers team wouldn't be an easy one. That's because Farrell's outscored its opponents 382 to nothing in the last nine games, and they would come out fast in this one. First possession, that's Jaden Harrison taking the handoff, finding the hole, and he's breaking free down the sideline. He's going to cruise in for the Steelers' first score of the night. Maplewood looking to answer. J.D. McFadden airing it out. Jesse McFadden goes up for it, wins the jump ball, and he's taken off the other way. Finally, Farrell able to wrestle him down, but not before he gets to the 19-yard line. Nice play there. Then, how about Caleb Donner? He's been doing it all year on the ground. He's going to make a nice cut here. 
and he's going to snap that scoreless streak. A failed two-point conversion, though, would make it 7-6 to six Steelers. Farrell getting back to work in the second. Sophomore QB trying and hold and keeping this one. He's going to cross the goal line. That made it 13-6, to six, Farrell. Now, less than a minute 30 to play in the half. McFadden looking for a big play. This pass gets tipped, but look at his brother, Jesse, making the catch. Nice first down. 20 seconds to go in the half. McFadden is going to scramble to his right, and guess who he's got? He's got his little bro again for another score. This one would be a battle, but the Steelers would go on to win this one. Thanks to 16 unanswered points in the fourth, they take home their fifth straight District 10 title. They win 35-20. In Class 5A sub-regional, it's unbeaten Oil City traveling to St. Francis University to face Holidaysburg. A rematch of last year's sub-regional. First quarter, Oil City up 3-0. That's Bryce Martilacki taking it outside, finally being brought down at the pylon. No worries, Trent Paddock would punch it in. That would give him six points. Tigers now up 7-3. Oil City, Noah Petro, he's done it all year, and he's going to do it again in this one. He has a 76-yard run in this one. That would give the Oilers a 9-7 lead. Oil City takes it this one for a second straight week. They win their first ever PIAA playoff game. Congrats to them. Now we go on to the Lewis Fitness and Performance Scoreboard. Wilmington's beating up on Greenville tonight, 45-7 to win the D10 2A championship. Gentlemen, that's it for me. Back to you. Thanks so much, Tom. Harbor Creek is the lone remaining local team playing tomorrow as the unbeaten Huskies draw Sharon in the District 10 3A semifinals. The Huskies have been known for their strong defense all season long within district play, but they see the big key to beating the Tigers and advancing to the finals could come down to matching their effective passing game. Cody, Ryan, and Merrick are all great wideouts, and I can trust them when I throw them the ball, so I know they'll most likely get it. So. I just have faith in them. Well, last week was a good tune-up for us against Slippery Rock. They had the potential to throw the ball. And uh, actually, the, the last couple weeks, uh, Corey and Northeast both sort of prepared us. Uh, each of those teams throw the ball a little bit more than previous teams. So slowly, we've been getting into that kind of mode. And it's, it's just common around the state. A lot of people throw the ball now. So uh, just got to be ready for it. Arbor Creek takes on Sharon tomorrow at 1 p.m. from Bender Field. The snow is cleared, even though there were six inches last night. Meadville High School is ready for the D10 3A semifinals. Let's head indoors now. It's the new look Erie Bayhawks taking on the old Bayhawks, the College Park Skyhawks, as the NBA G League season opening up. Third quarter, Erie's Cavell Bigby Williams gets the nice feed inside and the flush. He had a double double of 14 points, 10 rebounds. Clutch liking it as well. Then off. A couple missed shots. Quinton Chivas comes up with the bound and put back. How about this for efficiency off the inbounds? Jalen Adam tosses it, gets it right back, buries the three. Early on in the fourth quarter now, Josh Gray drops in a tough running floater. He would pour in a game high 28 points. And on the Lewis Fitness and Performance scoreboard, the Bayhawks pull away in the fourth quarter and notch their first win of the season 113 to 98. Seven Bayhawks finishing in double figures. They are back home Saturday night versus Greensboro. Season opener in men's college basketball. Mercyhurst hosting to Uville. Lakers in control in the early portions of the second half. Zach McIntyre draining the three-pointer from the near side. He had 10 points. Then the Lakers go down low. They convert on the mid-range jumper from the baseline. More inside work by Mercyhurst. Danny Ogale with the tough two points. Still manages to cash in. Then at the other end of the floor, Mercyhurst able to get the takeaway. And then the nice outlet pass goes back to Ogale as he's rewarded with the defense. And then the two-hand slam. Ooh. He and Gross chipping in with 21 points on the night. Mercyhurst scoring in triple digits Friday night. They route to Uville 115 to 60. Let's go to McComb Fieldhouse. Edinburgh men taking on Teal tonight in the opener. Opening half for the Fighting Scots. Anthony Coleman back from injury and feeling good on the pull up jumper from 15. Edinburgh turning the steel here into fast break points. Jaron Simpson, the former prep rambler, going the distance. Spin move. Oh, my goodness. Lays it in 16 points for Simpson. Then off the high screen, General McLean grad Alex J. Ripping the cords from downtown. Long three ball. Minutes later for the Borough Coleman, the step back and canning the triple to lead the way with 27 points as Edinburgh gets the win over Teal, 95 to 72. Women's basketball scores on the Lewis Fitness and Performance scoreboard. Gannon on the road edging out Elizabeth City 66 to 64, while Mercyhurst fell to West Liberty 92 to 79, and Penn State Barron picking up a tough road victory at Waynesburg as they win it 83 to 